I'm Stephen Hoyam, I'm from West Bromwich, I'm 33 years old and I'm a single father as well of two daughters. It started in 2011 and it was like shortly after that I had a funny metallic taste in my mouth. It wasn't normal, I hadn't experienced that before. So I'd obviously gone to the, uh, the, a locum centre at the time because the GP surgery was shut. They then told me then to go back to my GP to refer me to a urologist, which I did so. I went to the GP. He's kind of reluctant to doing it for some reason. But yeah, he referred me to the urologist later on, about three weeks later the appointment came. And then they did a CT scan and a cystoscopy, where the results came back fine. Turns out they was only looking for um, cancer-related problems. So I was then referred back to my GP. He got the nurse to do three different checks, which then turned out to be high. The nurse said, you'll probably need a blood pressure tablet, but when she referred me back to the GP, he didn't do anything about it again. He just like came across like it was a bit of a nuisance towards him. From 2011 then going into 2012, I'd started a new job as well. Came like to deal with the symptoms, to be fine with you. When you go to a GP and they're telling you there's nothing wrong with you, you tend to just take their word for it and just cracked on my life. There was like the first four months where I felt really ill. I felt like I was dying. And my body tended to you know, adjust to the symptoms. The urine kept on coming out as a cola colour. So then later on then in 2012, I had like a, a cause of diarrhoea. It was, it was like for between August and September. It lasted four weeks. So it went right. So I, I, go, I went back to the GP, but luckily enough, it was a locum GP that was there, not my original GP. So I went, and went to the hospital, got the test done. Went straight to work. We literally within three hours, the phone up, told me my kidneys were on four percent. I was like completely shocked out. You know, weren't expecting that. I thought it might be something anemia or something like that. But uh, yeah, it's the first time I found out that my kidneys had failed. I was at work. My car had broken down in Kidderminster. There was floods on the river at the time, so the AA said it was going to be seven hours before they could come out to me. So I was in my car with all this information in my head, rattling around, thinking, what, what am I supposed to do? They're telling me to get quickly to the QE, but I didn't know what, what was going on. They said, I'm lucky to be alive. I don't know what, how I'm standing up. So moved on then to my dad coming to pick me up from Kidderminster when he finished work and take me straight to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital where the further test and biopsies to establish that it was vasculitis that I had, which had attacked my kidneys over a two year period. up having to do emergency dialysis. I was on dialysis coming up to nearly the better half every year. It was about August 2013 where we started looking at going on the transplant list and my family then wanted to come forward as live donors. My dad wanted to step forward and donate his kidney, bless him, you know. Which is a hard thing to accept, a really hard thing to accept, but I had two children that I was looking after full time on my own as well. At the time they was aged two and four. When Stephen approached me and explained what had happened to him, I knew pretty much straight away that this is something that needed to be investigated. went on to obtain his medical records, reviewed his records in detail, because what I was looking for was vital symptoms of kidney failure, which may have been missed by the GP and by the hospital. And they were there, they were there in black and white. The biggest factor was the blood in the urine. Any patient within the NHS who has blood in the urine has to be fully investigated. So I had a better indication then that, yes, this is something that we, we, we need to act upon, but we still needed to obtain medical expert evidence. So initially I instructed a kidney specialist, which is known as a nephrologist. The expert came back to me and actually I remember this response more than others because he actually called me before he sent me the report and he said, look, um, I feel really strongly about this. There were very definite symptoms here, which the, the GP had failed to pick up on and his urologist had failed to pick up on. And he said, in my opinion, I think they just thought he's someone young, he can't have kidney failure and um, let's just send him on his way. All of the 
three experts said that all that the GP or the hospital had to do was perform a simple urine test or a blood test or both and they could have diagnosed this condition and because they didn't when he was told that he had kidney failure he, his kidney was at running at four percent and the kidney failure expert had actually said to us, had he been diagnosed at an early stage when he'd initially gone to the walk-in centre and his GP, he, he wouldn't have got to the stage of end-stage kidney failure, he wouldn't have needed dialysis and he certainly wouldn't have needed a transplant. to get an admission of liability from them, but it was very clear early on in their investigations that they were taking this seriously and they understood from the information that we'd presented to them that this wasn't something that they were going to be able to defend. We expected them potentially to fight it because that's sometimes what the NHS do, even with cases that are clearly undefendable. But they did, they put forward an offer in settlement and we didn't feel that the amount that they initially put forward was enough and represented what Stephen had been through. And so we worked with Stephen to value his case at a fair level and managed to achieve a good settlement for him. And I think it's something that is representative of what he's been through. And I'm really happy that we've done that. The kids are young. They don't remember back when the transplant took place. I can remember saying, Daddy can't pick you up at the moment because I had a fissure in my arm and it was being in use and I couldn't really lift heavy things with that arm because you've just had dialysis and it could rupture. So there was always saying, can you pick me up, Dad? When can you pick me up? So um, they dealt with it quite well, considering. I mean, they know to drink plenty of water now and stuff like that, so. Being diagnosed and then being put on the dialysis ward, it's mainly elderly people there. It was a complete shock to the system. I felt lost. I felt out of touch with what was going on. I mean, the staff there were great, but I just felt alienated. And reference to young people going through what I've gone through, if anything could be prevented through making awareness of just even asking your GP, double question them, simple blood test would have done. And that's all it would have been for me is a simple blood test and maybe this could have been prevented, you see, so. She's been fantastic. She's only filled me with confidence. There was never no promises about what was going to happen going forward, but she, she assured me there was like negligence there and we're going to get the right result for you. I think it's a credit to him and a credit to his family that they've made it through this and he's got such a, a positive outlook. That, that's what gets to me about Stephen every time and that's what enthuses me to do the job that I do.